Welcome back, AP. Oh, yeah, that's right. Down here in the corner right now. Not up in the top right, down in the bottom left. Really wigging kids out, all right? No one starts to flip that way. But today, we are. Shut it, Jenna Brady. All right, so anyway, supposed to be reminded to say happy birthday, Laura. It's good stuff. Also, that no one cares about your birthday, Lucas. And also, can't wait to introduce you to our new student tomorrow. All right? Get ready, Tomina. You're going to love her. All right, like, anyway, what? Did you miss the whole joke in class, Jules? No. Oh Wait, God. yes, kind of. I thought. What? I gotta take that test. I'm flipping right now. So anyway, I'll do it at the same time. All right, so we left off in class here, right? And we were discussing the corn laws, right? We were talking about how some huge problems were existing in Great Britain and how they're going to be striving for liberal reform, right? Now, the thing about liberal reform in Britain was because it was two divided bodies. You had your factory-owning middle class. Sorry, I'm also trying to give a kid a Renaissance art quiz right now because he's a big loser. All right, Dan Becker. Now, anyway, so an example of the aristocracy trying to prevent... Find it. All right, so the example of the aristocracy trying to prevent this land-owning or this now factory-owning middle class from breaking into their upper class, they're going to try and... Oh, my God, you pumped in so much water in this. You're not really mm. Was the Corn Laws, right? Now, the Corn Laws have been on the books since Henry VIII was actually in power, right? Henry VIII's a good guy. All right, so anyway, no. No, he's not, actually. No, wait. I'm confusing that with the Act of Supremacy. That's not the right like, law. The Corn Laws had been on the books since Elizabethan era, right? So after the discovery of, like, North and South America and the influx of wheat and grains coming in, the Corn Laws decided to try and prevent anybody else from profiting off of the growth of grains that you were not allowed to buy foreign grains unless in desperate need, like crazy high price, right? So this gives the aristocracy more money, and it makes the price of food skyrocket, right? Because it gives the aristocracy the ability to charge basically whatever they want for flour, right? And why is flour so important, AP Euro turds? Because what's flour the most... Or flour Flour, Jules Bear. Oh, bread. Yeah, bread. Everybody needs bread, all right? Everybody needs bread, okay? Now, things are going to lash out after these corn laws become re-established in 1815 and very aggressive, right? Because the factory-owning middle class realizes that this is just an attempt to keep the land-owning aristocracy in Great Britain in power, right? So... The factory owner middle class starts organizing these big, big protests, right? These crazy, really savage protests, okay? In re like in response to the Tory government. So to take away from this, like a couple little bits on this slide, really fast. You have now been introduced to the fact that you now have organized protest against conservative regimes in Great Britain, right? So you now also know that there is a political party in Britain that is known as the Conservative Party within their parliament, because remember. Is the ruling heir, or like is the ruling class, the queen and the king in Britain ever since say, uh, when was their power super limited? Ever since 1215, really more than a figurehead. No, right. So the parliaments is going to be taken over by the Tories, is what they're called. Jules, you ever heard of the Tories? The yeah. Tory government, yeah, the Conservative Party. They faced huge protests because they passed these things called the Six Acts. They suppressed free speech freedom of assembly, freedom of the press, and that was all in response, okay? So this came first and then this. So this paragraph right here should be above the battle slash massacre of Peterloo, right? So the, I got to show you all this picture too while I'm flipping this. Now, the battle of Peterloo is, of course, a reference to what? Waterloo. There you go. It's a reference to Waterloo because what happened to poor old Napoleon at Waterloo? He got trounced bad too like he had come back from elba and he got destroyed by a coalition army of mainly britain and prussia right so at the battle of peterloo it was a massive organized protest right and here's a political cartoon that actually symbolized it so it was a huge protest by factory owning middle class people and they organized themselves and it was completely peaceful but of course due to these things called the six acts it was actually illegal to do this at all right but did they do it anyway Heck yeah, they did it anyway. And they did it going against the corn laws. They were like, these corn laws are not fair, all right? They're stupid. You're regulating trade. We're liberals. What type of trade do we like? Starts with an L. It means no government intervention. 
Laissez-faire, right? Laissez-faire and let more people vote, dang it. All right, so because only 8% of the people in Britain could vote. So what ended up happening, a constable, just so you know what that is, is like a police officer, all right? So these constables rolled up to this protest, and they were given arrest warrants for six of the guys in the middle of the protest, right? All these constables were on horseback, all right? So the entire crowd is just standing there. Word on the street is all the constables were also drunk, that they just had come from a pub, and they had been drinking the entire time. And they were told, without question, you are to go to the middle of that crowd without anybody getting in your way and arrest those men in the middle that are, like, propagating all these new ideas, right? This idea of more voting for people, get rid of the corn laws, blah, 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 right? So what the constables did is, without going slowly... They trampled over the entire crowd and killed 15 people. The first casualty in the Battle of Peterloo was a two-year-old boy. Got knocked out of his mother's arms onto the concrete and died. Yeah, like, so a bunch of men were sabered to death. One guy, one woman was thrown into a cellar and then murdered on the spot by a constable. Crazy stuff, right? Really, really savage things. Because this kind of just shows this new outbreak of these two new political factions really kind of going to war with each other. Some of you are like, oh, wait, this is not very Age of Metternich-like. You know what I mean? This doesn't sound too peaceful to me. But it doesn't count as warfare because it's fighting within a country, right? So the Tories and the Whigs are going to go head to head. Some of you all have heard the name Tory or Whig before, right? So the Whigs are the liberals and the Tories are the conservatives, right? The Whigs are going to convince and push a lot of new reforms. Let me move myself. Uh, wait, oh, wait, oh, there, oh, there we go. All right, so, what's up, Chris? I'm flipping. Now, anyway, they're going to push a lot of new reforms. Like, for example, like the Reform Bill of 1832, which is actually going to increase suffrage by 50%. So now 12% of the Great Britain could vote. Yay! <laughs> so, also, they're going to successfully get the Corn Laws repealed. I need you to write this down, though. I need you to write this down. The anti- Corn Law League, all right? There was an entire group of people that organized and had membership cards and, like, not shirts, but signs and all these other crazy stuff called the Anti-Corn Law League, where they would show up and have protests in rebuttal of these six acts and just get all mad and freak out and stuff like that. The Anti-Corn Law League was successful, though, and they were successfully repealed in 1846. They also tried to get universal suffrage, but was it successful? Now, they had these huge petitions, and the, the, the Whigs were like, yeah, get giant petitions together. We'll let everybody vote. But do liberals want everyone to vote during this time? No. Why not? Because poor people don't know what's good for them. You know, like, so they wanted only factory owners to be able to vote. They wanted to extend it to just the middle class. They still didn't want poor people to be able to vote. Universal suffrage is more Democrat or socialist. They would want that instead, right? So they tried to get universal suffrage. The Anti-Corn Law League's a big deal. And then also, when they were trying to get universal suffrage, every time they submitted a petition, it immediately was ripped up and ignored. But then also, this is right around the time that, see if y'all can guess who this is, all right? We're going to do this live real quick, all right? So this person was born in 1819, right when all this was going on. Do you know who this lady is? Do you know who she is? 1819. She became queen, she became queen when she was 18, when she looked about this age, right? Do you now know who it is? She was 18, what? Very, very nice. Good job, Jenna Brady, Queen Victoria, right? So this is the era of Victoria. Victoria also was one of the people responsible for repealing the corn laws. She was like, these are dumb, right? This is just actually like preventing industrial growth. This is stupid. Let's get rid of them. And were the corn laws kind of outdated by 1846 anyway? Yeah. Conservatives don't go quietly into the night. They, they make a lot of ruckus, all right? So anyway, but what? what? Who? Jo jobs, man. Jobs, jobs. Now, the Tories also did not go quietly. And this is the last... Wow, Chris. It's the last thing I need you to write down for this. Or, well, we're going to do this in the state of family. But the Tories did not go quietly into the night. They passed a thing called the 10-Hour Act in 1847. Why would they do that? Why would the Tories, the conservatives, help out the working class? To try and get them to stop supporting who? They are poor to get them to stop supporting the middle class all the time. So the battleground in Britain became over the poor people. You know what I mean? So, like, the Tories would, like, help them out so the poor people would vote them into office. But then the Whigs would turn around and try to help them out so they would vote them into office, right? It's a lot of very, very insane liberal reform going on in Great Britain. Yeah, I know, right? It didn't last for long. It didn't last for long. Their power was soon diminished very quickly. But why do you think 
everybody refers to the age of Victoria as being so great because the poor people had the ability to actually have a slight voice, right? So then you've got, of course, Ireland and the Great Potato Famine. Ah, uh, poor Irish people. All right, so yeah, poor Irish people. Yeah, so causes. Of course, the extreme population growth, right, of about 1840. I'm flipping, Brainiac. I'm recording. Volpe, I'm recording right now. You want to come say hi? Because you know someone, I think, in this class. Whose class is it? AP Euro. <laughs> <laughs> so causes of the Great Potato Famine. Extreme population growth is a big one, right? People were multiplying rapidly in Europe everywhere at this time, but did Ireland have the economy to support a growth of five million people within almost within a hundred years. No flipping way, right? Because they were dirt poor. They had extreme poverty. Apparently the Irish lived in shanty shacks. They wore rags. Some, most of them could not afford socks, stockings, or shoes. So the Irish were literally walking around and then of course the blight shows up. Mainly because, Jules, they based their entire economy off what? One crop. <laughs> Yeah, all right, so one crop, which is not a bright move, right? The potato. And then this is what got him. The blow, oh my God, come on, no, I fixed it. Oh, you can't see the blight. Oh, I, did, I covered it up on accident. Yeah, but that is a nice potato, but the one behind is really gross and rotten. All right, oh, I'm sorry. Now, why, though? Why did they base their entire economy off of one crop? Because they're stupid and barbarian. <laughs> well, they base their entire economy off one crop because one acre of potatoes can feed a family of six for a year. One acre, which is about the size of the courtyard, all right? One acre for a year. And what did they usually eat it with? They ate the potatoes usually raw with a glass of milk. Oh, gross. <laughs> I know. That Thomas Malthus, the guy that spoke out against population growth, said, I have seen slaves, I have seen Native Americans in desperate squalor and subjected to violence, but I have never seen someone as sad as the Irish. Right? That is so bad. <laughs> so anyway, and also the other scary thing is like, why are they doing all of this stuff? Well, they stayed poor because all of the land in Ireland was rented to them. So if you made any money and then fixed up the house, what happens to your rent? It goes up, right? So they couldn't afford it. So they were locked in by this landowning aristocrats, right? Because the Protestants in North Ireland that were actually like Presbyterian mostly, they owned most of the wealth of Ireland, and they rented all the land to them. So you were stuck right there in the middle. Also, the Irish started getting married super young because, hey, the goal in life is to get married young, make a lot of children, provide for your, provide for your parents, right? The goal, they, their parents encouraged it. Irish children were encouraged to go get married quick, right? Because they wanted to be able to be taken care of in their elderly years by these other by their kids, right? So the great, whoops, sorry. Now, the great, there you go. And then the Great Famine, of course, from 1845 to 1851, was on and off crop failures. Everybody sees this as five straight years, but it's like one year there was blight, and then the next there was not. And then two years in a row there was blight, and then the next year there was not. But the Great Famine on and off was crop failures that led to mass. Wait, is immigration when you come in? Yeah, immigration. Wait, I think immigration is when you leave your country. Immigration with an I is when you go into the other one. Yeah. Yeah, he's right. All right, so anyway, now. So the Great Famine resulted in the immigration of 2.75 million people out of Ireland, mostly to the United States and to the Caribbean, and, uh, and then also the mass starvation or unbirthing of 1.5 million people, like uh, stillbirths and uh, deaths during pregnancy. Yeah, I know. Britain also, to f circumvent this, did absolutely what? Nothing. Nothing. Not like so. They just watched it happen, and they were like, dang it. That stinks. We should probably do something. All right, corn laws. All right, so anyway, like, that was their prerogative. Well, they were gone already, but still. But that's it. So very, very good job, guys. We will introduce you to the new student tomorrow. She's very, very sprightly. All right, so I'll see you guys then. Have a good one.